Hi, I'm Kylie and welcome to Just Another Army Vet 2.0 with the channel dedicated to India. Today I'm reacting to a video by AKTK Documentary. They graciously allowed me to react to their video, so thank you. This is The Silence of the Swatika, the biggest betrayal in English full film. So I'm breaking this video down into two parts and I will stop the video occasionally just so I can share my thoughts. I do have a pen and some paper here so you might see me taking some notes. I don't know what this video is about but I'm guessing it's going to talk about the history of the swastika and how the Nazis took this ancient Hindu or Buddhist symbol and just made it into a symbol of hate. That's what I'm guessing at least. Let's get to it. History is evidence of great civilizations turning into dust and their ruins leaving a shocking legacy. A symbol of well-being and prosperity was tarnished over the last century. It is time to peel the history and know the truth. July 2020. Simran, the student union head of Brandeis University in the U.S., calls the swastika a symbol of peace and suggests including it in the school curriculum. A huge protest was carried out and Simran had to apologize. Students were offended by the swastikas. What happened with Simran wasn't the first Hindu incident. groups in Canada say they're being subjected to hate. In April 2015, the George Washington University in the U.S. mulls banning the swastika. Bill was introduced in the U.S. state of Maryland seeking a ban on the swastika. All due to hate for the swastika. This symbol is a part of daily life for the Hindu community. The idea of ban was not justified. In April 2021, a campaign was run to implement legislation to ban the swastika in a few states of the U.S. Several Hindu organizations protested. How could the swastika be banned or considered a symbol of hate for crimes that did not happen underneath it? Very happy to inform that this bill will no longer be moving forward. So Maryland is also settled. The entire Western world views the swastika with abomination and as a diabolical symbol. The media coverage is the biggest reason behind it. Calling it a symbol of hate. It's tonight a symbol of hate. One of the most controversial symbols imaginable. It's the latest example of hate symbols in the Sun City. One thing the United States is really good at is protesting and trying to get things canceled and making people apologize. So when that Indian student did that at that one university, I'm not surprised what the reaction was. That's just typical of what you'd see in the United States. The haunting question is, why is the swastika a demonic symbol in the Western media, while it is revered in the East, especially in India? Because Hitler persecuted six million Jews and buried them under his sign, but was it the swastika or something else? Hitler never used the word swastika in his recorded life. Did Hitler ever use the swastika? If not, then what is it that engulfed six million Jews? Who are those people who changed a symbol of peace to that of evil? The answer is one of the greatest betrayals of the 20th century, with profound implications for billions globally. World War II. Never in history has such ruination, physical and moral, been associated with the name of one man, Hitler, who ruled Germany from 1933 until his death, under a symbol that the Western world now calls swastika. Was Hitler so influenced by India and Hindu tradition that he made the swastika a symbol of his entire political life? To know this, let us peep into the speeches and writings of Hitler. Hitler a chronology of his life and time, 
This book compiles all the speeches and statements of Hitler. Let's see if his words and beliefs are consistent with the current understanding of swastika in the West. May 21st, 1930. Hitler angrily replies to a German politician, Otto Strasser, that there is one possible kind of revolution. All revolutions, and I have studied them all, have been racial. Hitler said further, didn't you declare openly for the Indian independence movement when it was obviously a rebellion of the inferior Hindu race against the superior Anglo-Nordic? Hitler declared, quote, the Nordic race has the right to dominate the world and that right will be the guiding principle of our foreign policy. December 4th, 1931. Hitler advocates friendship with England in a press conference and says that, quote, the loss of India by the British Empire would be a misfortune for the rest of the world, including Germany. January 26th, 1932. Hitler, while addressing an association of Germany's most illustrious industrialists, proclaimed the superiority of the white race and said that the British Raj did not conquer India by means of justice and law but by the most brutal ruthlessness on the basis of racial superiority over the Indians. On July 27, 1941, Hitler, with an idea of trampling Eastern Europe, said that this region can be controlled with over 250,000 soldiers. We should learn from the British Raj, which is controlling 400 million Indians with 50,000 soldiers. In a speech on 8th August 1941, Hitler talked about making Russia to Germany as India was to the British Raj. On 17th, 18th September, once again in a conversation, Hitler said that if British rule leaves India today, then India will collapse in no time. 2nd August 1942, Hitler said in an evening conversation that he would still like Britain to rule India. These facts pose a contradiction. Would a man so megalomaniacal, so devilish in his understanding of humanity, with such prejudices against the Hindus, make an ancient Hindu symbol of prosperity, the swastika, represent his entire political career? There is more to this than meets the eye. So I see where he's going. He's pretty much saying that if Hitler viewed India and Hinduism as beneath the white Nordic races and whatnot, then why would he take a symbol of those inferior races and use it as a part of his empire? I think that's where he's going with it. The world today knows the swastika to be a symbol of Hitler's crimes. The mere mention and depiction of swastika triggers talks of anti-Semitism and the Holocaust. But how did Hitler arrive at the Nazi symbol and what did he call it? Hitler explains this in his autobiography, Mein Kampf. Hitler refers to the Nazi symbol as Hakenkreuz. It appears eight times in his book. But today, Google translates Hakenkreuz to swastika. But strangely, Haken and Kreuz separately translates to hooked cross. Kreuz in Germany means cross and was even used to name medallions and badges for the German military. For instance, Balkenkreuz means beam cross. Ritterkreuz means knight's cross. How then did the Hakenkreuz become the swastika? Cross is a symbol of Christianity. Hakenkreuz means hooked cross. So when did this become swastika? The answer is hidden behind 2,000 years of history which culminated in the brutal persecution of six million Jewish people. Nazi Germany was not the only country using this symbol. 
The Finnish Air Force used this symbol from 1918 to 2020. They called it Hakaritsi, which Google translates correctly to Hakenkruz. Similarly, in the County Council headquarters of Britain, built in 1939, on the uniform of the 45th Infantry Division of the U.S. Army, in France, on the airplanes of Air Force Unit N-124, and on the ruble printed after 1917 in Russia, the West was full of symbols that looked like the Hakenkruz. In the USA, the cover of the 1913 yearbook of Westfield High School shows a swastika-like symbol which they call the Gamidian. The word has hidden roots in the West. Gamedian, according to the modern English dictionary, is a cross that looks like a swastika. But if we see in the glossary of liturgical and ecclesiastical terms, published in 1877, there's only a cross found in churches from the very beginning. Hakenkreuz, or Gamarion, or Hakaristi, all mean a kind of cross. But was the word swastika ever used as a cross? The answer is a yes, due to callous scholarship, which spread in spite of cautions raised by some eminent scholars of the time. German archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann traveled to Greece in 1868 with the goal of finding the ancient city of Troy. In 1871, Schliemann found the remains of the ancient Troy. The remains had the symbol resembling a swastika. These remains and these symbols immediately became a topic of discussion. In 1885, Heinrich Schliemann's book Ilios was published in French, in which he used the word swastika for the symbol. But what did he mean by the swastika? A direct English translation of Ilio strongly suggests that Schliemann looked at the symbol as a kind of cross and used the word swastika for it. So he made the name up? This comes out clearly in an 1891 English translation by Eugene Seeley's, which says that the symbol found in the excavation is a cross. The uh, English version of Schleimann's book, published in uh, 1891, uses both words, the swastika and the hook cross for the symbol at different places. But the use of the swastika was opposed. Schleimann, in his book Ilios, the city and country of the Trojan, described how his friend and scholar Max Mueller was angry with the use of the word swastika. In his protest, Max Mueller said, quote, I do not like the use of the word swastika outside India. It is a word of Indian origin and has its history and definite meaning in India." End quote. Almost prophetically, he warns, quote, the mischief arising from the promiscuous use of technical terms is very great. The occurrence of such crosses in different parts of the world may or may not point to a common origin, but if they are once called swastika, the vulgus profanum or common masses will at once jump to the conclusion that they all come from India, and it will take some time to weed out that prejudice." End quote. In 1894, a famous book was written, The Migration of Symbols. In chapter two, the author writes that Dr. Schliemann has found the Gamidian in the excavations of Troy. And in this book, he explains the meaning of the word Gamidian, a type of Christian cross. The word swastika is not used here. Further, it was written in this book that Hindus make a midian, i.e. a kind of cross, on their books on New Year's Day, not the swastika.
Did the West also consider the swastika to be a kind of a cross? Be it some postcards of 1907 or some American stock certificates of 1910, all evidence suggests that the word swastika was also used for a kind of a cross. So my perspective as an American in Generation X is that I have never heard anyone reference the swastika as a cross before. The idea has never even crossed my mind. But looking at it now, I can kind of see how it looks like a hooked cross. But how did Hitler's Hakenkreuz become the Indian swastika, which has no relation with a cross? The answer would dismay you. And for that, we have to look at Hitler's childhood. In his book, Mein Kampf, Hitler recounts the joyous religious moments of his childhood in the town of Lambach, how he used to take singing lessons in the church courtyard in his spare time, and how in doing so, he was completely immersed in the festivities of the church. How the head of the monastery was the same to Hitler as the village priest was to Hitler's father, a role model and how he himself wanted to be the priest of the monastery. Hitler wanted to be a priest? Alluding to this, an old friend of Hitler also talks about how Hitler wanted to be a priest and how he used to wear a kitchen apron and preach in the pose of a priest. The place Hitler talks about in his book is the Lombok Abbey Monastery, which has the symbol in seven different spaces. According to Robert Pine, who wrote the popular biography of Hitler, Hitler could see this sign in his childhood from the window of his room and on his way to his school. According to Pine, this sign is the inspiration behind Nazi Hakenkreuz. Although Hitler never clearly mentioned about this inspiration, but the effect of Christianity on Hitler from childhood and his relation to this monastery points in this direction. What does this symbol mean in a Christian church? And why did Hitler choose it? The answer to these questions will peel another layer of this mystery. History was changed. The game of chess was played with humanity where the moves were all in one wrong direction. And these moves were going to become a great source of concern in the future for innumerable people of the East, for which we need to look at when the West started using the word swastika. In 1871, Frederick Schliemann found these signs on the remains of Troy, and the Oxford Dictionary proposes that the modern use of the word swastika entered the English language in 1871. But what was the symbol called before 1871? In a book called The Pursuant of Arms, published by the British Library in 1851, this symbol is called Philfort, which is called Gamadion in the Greek churches, and the only similar sign is found on old coins of the Great Civilization. No other so popular example is there. Quote, we are still in want of equally famous clue, unquote. These words from 1851 book suggest that the West did not know of the swastika used in the East. Indeed, the book never refers to the symbol as a swastika. In uh, another book published in 1870 named Textile Fabrics, on the robes used in the church, the word Gamadian is used 19 times in it and always to signify some sort of a cross, never as a swastika. Gamma is a Greek letter. Four gammas joined together to form a gamarion. Oh, that is an interesting perspective. He is completely right. That is the gamma symbol right there. It was occasionally used by early Christian society. But how did this symbol become synonymous with Jesus Christ? The 
किसी भी भवन का एक अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ एनी बिल्डिंग इज इट्स कॉर्नर स्टोन इफ अ कॉर्नर स्टोन इज सीन फ्रॉम आउटसाइड इट्स शेप इज लाइक द ग्रीट लेटर गैमा विच आर कंबाइंड टू फॉर्म अ गैमेडियन Nelson's Dictionary of Christianity states that the Gamidian has been used as a symbol of Jesus Christ and as a cornerstone. But why is the Gamidian so important as a cornerstone? Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of Christianity. The precious cornerstone in Isaiah 28:16 is a reference to Jesus Christ as the foundation of God's people. Similarly, in the New Testament of the Bible, in Ephesians 2:9-21, Paul mentions, "You are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone." Bible mein lagbhag In about ten places in the Bible, Jesus Christ is called the cornerstone, and the Gamadian has also been called a cornerstone. This is why, in Nelson's Dictionary of Christianity, Gamadian is called a sign of Jesus Christ. And for this reason, the importance of Gamadian in Christianity can be understood. This sign is still present in many places of importance to Christianity. On the 8th century holy well and the cross slab of St Brigid in Ireland's Cliffany, 6th century Hagia Sophia Church in Istanbul, 10th century Ergwert Salter's Christian Manuscripts cover page, Gothic Cathedral of Notre Dame, or in the medieval church of Lalibela, the cross and the hooked cross can be seen side by side. There were several types of crosses on coins used by the Merovingian dynasty, one of which was the hooked cross. Be it the transenna panels of Christian architecture from the 11th century found in Italy, or the grey stones from the 13th to the 16th centuries found in Bosnia, we can see this sign. It is very common for this sign to be found in ancient churches or other places associated with Christianity. Not surprisingly, this sign can also be seen on the floor of the Pope's official residence in Vatican City. Oh, interesting. It was necessary to peek into the history of the symbol to understand its relationship with Christianity. But it begs the question, was Hitler so influenced by Christianity that he chose a symbol which metaphorically represented Jesus Christ? to drive his politics and ideologies it is not as difficult as understanding einstein's theory of relativity once the pandora's box of hitler's speeches is opened and dismantled on april 12 1922 in the nazi party newspaper Hitler said that he is following the example of Jesus Christ in the struggle against the Jewish people and it is inappropriate to say that speaking against the Jews is same as speaking against Christianity. I still don't understand that because Jesus was the king of Jews. He was Jewish, so I uh... On November 11th, a newspaper in Munich published an interview with Hitler describing how he was fighting Marxism. which was influenced by Jews and how Jesus Christ was a German May 1923 Hitler in a social gathering said he would enter Berlin the same way Jesus Christ entered the Temple of Jerusalem and drag the money lenders out using a whip In 1926 during a Christmas speech Hitler said that his struggle against Jews is to carry out the work of Christ, which he could not accomplish in his lifetime. Pachis October 
In a speech in Munich on 25th October 1930, Hitler called Hakenkreuz a part of the Christian tradition and said, "We should have no doubt that this Christian cross is a symbol of the struggle against the Jews, Marxist, and the Bolsheviks." Further, he hinted, "If the Lord Jesus Christ suddenly appears in front of the people of Germany today, then he may join the Nazi Party too." Hitler in his speech Hitler used to describe the work of his party as god's work Hitler on the other hand wanted to run his own party as a religious order On November 30th, 1944, in a long speech on Judaism versus Christianity, Hitler tramples on the notion that Jesus Christ was a Jew because according to him, Judaism is a symbol of capitalism and whoever follows it is corrupt. Not surprised that Hitler started writing his own narrative to justify what he was doing. I mean, it makes sense. These sentiments didn't resonate only in Hitler's speeches. In fact, his entire political career was permeated with vitriolic, lava-like racial segregation. Jesus Christ in one of the most popular posters on the life of Jesus Christ John the Baptist is seen baptizing him while a white dove is hovering around him in a clear sky with a shining sun In 1935 the Nazi party publishes a similar poster of Hitler the only difference being Christ is replaced by Hitler and the dove is replaced by an eagle. I cannot imagine the amount of man hours and research it took to make this video. I mean, obviously this is very well made. I had no idea that this all boiled down to Christianity in terms of the Gamidian meaning a cornerstone Jesus Christ it even uses the Greek letter gamma I had no idea and most Americans certainly don't know that either so I find that very interesting that it's just a hooked cross for the most part I will point something out that I think is probably the heart of the video which is that as we're trying to figure out how Hitler came up with the symbol and talking about his history what are the two things that are missing any mention of india and any mention of hinduism which i think is so important because obviously this is a separate thing they are not the same so let's continue on to part 2 which when i published it i'll put it right here thanks for watching and please smash that like button